So we will see the next concept, proportions. So we say that when two ratios are equivalent, they are in proportion. Say for example, you have 10 is to 15 and 8 is to 12. So 10 by 15 and 8 by 12. So these two fractions, so when simplified, so the values are same. So 10 by 15 is equal to 2 by 3 and 8 by 12 also equal to 2 by 3 after cancelling the common factor 4. Here the common factor is 5. So after simplifying you get as 2 by 3 and this ratio after simplifying the common factor you get 2 by 3. So whenever these two fractions are equivalent they are said to be in proportion. Say for example so A by B is equal to C by D. So these two ratios are equivalent so then they are said to be in proportion. So when they are in proportion it is written as So this is read as A is to B as to C is to D. So we have written this four parts in proportion. A is to B as to C is to D. Here A is the first proportion, B is the second proportion, C is the third proportion and D is the fourth proportion. So when two ratios are equivalent, they are said to be in proportion and they are written in this format. So in this, the product of the extremes and product of means will be always same. So when the ratios are in proportion, product of extremes that is AD is equal to product of the means BC. So by having this factor, if one value is missing, you can find out that value. So we will see a few examples how to find out the fourth proportion, third proportion and mean proportion etc. And the question is find the fourth proportion of 3, 4 and 6. Here these three values are said to be in proportion. So without changing the order we have to write in the proportion concept 3, 4 and 6 and the fourth value is missing that is fourth proportion is missing. We have to find the fourth proportion by having the equating the product of extremes and product of means. So we will see the working. So the numbers are 3, 4 and 6. So you are asked to find the fourth proportion. So as they are in proportion, without changing the order, this has to be written in this proportion format. So 3 is to 4 as to 6 is to. So as the fourth proportion is asked, take x in the place. So product of extremes is equal to product of means. So by equating this concept, so 3x equal to 4 into 6. So here the fourth proportion is 8. So 3 is to 4 as to 6 is to 8. So 3 into 2 we have got as 6 and the second part is as here the fourth proportion is as so 4 into 2 is 8. So the fourth proportion is got by equating the concept product of extremes equal to product of means. So here equating the concept of product of extremes equal to product of mean. So writing the numbers without changing the order 3 is to 4 as to 6 is to x. So taking x for the fourth place, 3x equal to 4 into 6 and we have got the value x equal to 8. So we will see the next question. So the question is, find the third proportion of 25 and 5. So here third proportion is asked. So without changing the order, writing these numbers, we can find the third proportion. So we will see the working. So numbers are 25 and 5 and third proportion is asked. So 
when two numbers given and third proportion is asked, this 25 is to 5 as to, so the second number is repeated again and x is written in the fourth place. So though it is in the fourth place, we are finding the third number which is in proportion with this numbers and having the concept of product of extremes equal to product of means, we have got 25x equal to 5 into 5, 25, where x equal to 1. So when two numbers are given, so they ask this question, so students may get confused that how to find the third proportion when two numbers are given. So when two numbers are there, as it is, they are in proportion, repeat the second number again, take x in the fourth place and find uh, using the product of uh, extremes and means, we have got x value as 1. So, which is the third proportion in this proportions. So, the working here is 25 is to 5 as to 5 is to x. The second number is repeated again and x is taken in the fourth place. So, product of extreme that is 25x equal to 5 into 5 and x is 1 which is the third proportion. So we will see the next question. What is the mean proportion of 12 and 3? So here two numbers are given and you are asked to find the mean proportion. So when two ratios are in continued uh, ratios, the second value is, uh, is called as the mean proportion. So we will see how to find the mean proportion for 12 and 3. So mean value of this 12 and 3 is asked. So you can write this in proportion. So taking x in the middle. So 12 is to x as to x is to 3. So mean proportion is also called as geometric mean also. So here that value is asked. So 12 is to x as to x is to 3. Now product of extremes equal to product of means. So product of means we have two x's in the middle. So you have x square equal to 12 into 3. So x equal to 6. The mean value of 12 and 3 is 6. So mean proportion of 12 and 3 is 6. So when you are asked to find the mean proportion, so you are writing in this pattern you can work out. Or when mean proportion for two numbers is asked, so just multiply these two numbers and take square root to get the mean proportion. So product of 12 and 3 is 36. So square root is 6 which is the mean proportion. So the working here is mean proportion is asked. If the ratios are in continued ratios, that is ending with one and starting with the other, the second value is called as a mean proportion. So here mean proportion is asked, so take that as x, 12 is to x as to x is to 3, where x square is 36, so x equal to 6. So mean proportion for 12 and 3 is 6. So we will see the next question. So using these proportions, so we will see another example, a practical example. A bag contains 1 rupee, 2 rupee and 5 rupee coins in the ratio of 2 is to 3 is to 5. The total value of these coins in the bag is rupees 198. Then how many 5 rupee coins are there in the bag? So in this bag you have 1 rupee, 2 rupee and 5 rupee coins, the ratio of these coins is given, that is 2 is to 3 is to 5. So all the value comes to rupees 198. So you are asked to find how many 5 rupee coins are there. So this 198 is total value. So whenever total is given, we will divide the total by sum of the ratios. Here this 198 is value of these coins, not total number of coins. So you can't divide this 198 with the sum of these ratios given. So we will see how to do this working. So the working is, so in this bag you have 1 rupee, 2 rupee and 5 rupee coins. So 1 rupee, 2 rupees 
2 rupee and 5 rupee coin. The ratio of these coins is 2 is to 3 is to 5. So total value they have given as rupees 198. So now when total is given, we will divide by sum of the ratio. But these are all number of coins, not the value. So the value cannot be divided by number of coins uh, parts. Say suppose you have 5 rupee coins 4. So it is not that you, we have 4 rupees. We have 5 into 4, 20 rupees. So value will change. So we have to find the value and then divide 198 by that value. So when value of one part between this ratio is found, so we can find how many 5 rupee coins or 2 rupee coins or 1 rupee coin is there in the bag. So for that, you assume that value of one part is 1. So assume that value of one part is 1. So when value of one part is 1, it means that we have 2 1 rupee coins, 3 2 rupee coins and 5 5 rupee coins. So when value of one part is 1, we will have 2 1 rupee coins. So then what will be the value? 2 1 rupee coins means 2 rupees. 3 2 rupee coins means 3 into 2, we have 6 rupees. 5 5 rupee coins means we have 25 rupees. So adding all, so it is 33 rupees. So when you assume that value of one part is 1, the total worth in the bag will be 33 rupees. So for what value of one part, we will get rupees 198. So when value of one part is 1, so value we get as rupees 33. So value is rupees 33. For what value you will get rupees 198. So for that dividing this 198 by rupees 33 we get value of one part. So cancelling this 11 3 times 18 by 3 it is 6. So we have got value of one part is six. So which we have cancelled out from this number of coins. So whenever this coins question is asked, so there are so many methods to proceed, but this will be the easiest one. That is assuming value of one part as one, find what will be the value of this coin. And now dividing the exact value by this, you get value of one part. So here it is 6. And now how many 5 rupee coins are there? 6 into 5, 30. So if they ask 1 rupee coins, so you have 2 parts, 2 into 6, there are 12 coins. So if 2 rupee coins are asked, so ratio of parts is 3. 18 coins. So if 5 rupee coins are asked, it is 5. So the question is how many 5 rupee coins are there? So answer is 30. So friends, so whenever you attend this coins question, so assume that value of one part is 1, so work will become easier. So assume that it is 1 and you get the worth as 33 and for exact value of one part what will be this 198 so by dividing you get the exact value of one part and multiplying accordingly you get the answer that is how many 1 rupee or 2 rupee or 5 rupee coins are there according to the question you will get the answer so we will see the next concept